Hello, uh, this is a video I'm going to make in reply to someone asking me if I could make a chart or a graph ex explaining how I have valve harmonicas. Um, I thought about it and I really don't know how to make a chart. Um, the best thing I think I could do is try to explain in detail exactly what it is and, and why it works. Okay, so first I'm going to take apart my harmonica and uh, first off all the reeds that are riveted on the outside, okay, on the outside of the harmonica, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's the top or the bottom, that's the outside. When you take the screws out and you take the plates apart, the section that's facing down into the comb, into the, into the chambers, that's the inside, okay? So all the reeds that are riveted on the outside, those are draw reeds. All the reeds that are riveted on the inside, those are blow reeds. So all the wind savers on the outside are wind savers for the blow reeds and vice versa. All the wind savers on the inside are wind savers for the, the draw reeds. Okay, and here's how this works. Okay, um, since this is a blow reed, when you when you blow into the harmonica, that reed that's riveted on the inside, it tries to uh, vibrate through the slot. Okay, so if that wind saver was there, it would, it's on the other side of the reed plate. The wind savers are lighter than the reeds, so the wind saver would blow open first and then the reed would come up. So theoretical, theoretically, they, they won't hit. Uh, sometimes they do and you just have to cut them back a little bit or put a new one on. Um, what I have found sometimes, the, the factory will get a little overzealous putting glue on and there's glue a little, fur, a little ways up the slot. And a little pointer here and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, right. Jeez. This is hard doing this way. Right here, this is called a rivet pad. Okay, so uh, this is this is the inside. This is a blow. The blow one. So the reed is on the inside. This is the end of the the rivet right here. So this is where the the, the wind saver would be glued. It would be right, glued right there and then it goes down the length of of that, that slot right there so it's glued on one end so it, it operates in the same principle as the reed does. It's free swinging and it, it, it's fixed on one end and right over the top of uh, the rivet where, where it's riveted. So it's riveted on the other side of this reed plate so the, it's, it's riveted, you know, it's uh, glued right there Anytime you, you open up a new one, look, and you, you, you can see what I mean. But so that's that's the principle of how they work. So how half valving works is, if you take the highest note, hole number one, hole number one through three, uh, and let's break the chromatic down into four holes. Holes one through four is one octave. Holes five through eight is the same exact thing, just uh, the notes are higher. It's an octave higher. Okay. 9 through 12, it's the same thing. So all you have to do, all we have to do, all we have to do is uh, understand holes one through four, and then just repeat, or two more times of the, of the chromatic. Okay, so holes one through three, the draw note is higher than the blow note. So how do you make it half out? And so you re, you remove the blow note wind saver, which the, the the blow notes are the reeds on the inside. So the wind savers are the one, two, three. There, oh, this is really hard to do. Uh, yeah, it's so this this is where the, the the wind saver would be if it was there. Okay, so when we so when we draw, what we're doing is we're drawing, we're sucking this reed into the slot okay there is a, there's a wind saver in there that wind saver is lighter than the reed so that wind saver opens up this this reed starts vi vibrating through the slot well the, the blow reed on the inside because it doesn't have that wind saver on the outside because as you draw if there was a wind saver there on the outside it would suck it it would suck it close just it, it's basically it's an air check valve that's what it is the one on the inside covering uh, the 
the, the draw read. See the draw reads riveted on the outside. So on the inside of that slot, there is a wind saver. It's lighter than the reed, so that's opening up. So we got that that one opened up. The reed is riveting. The the reed is vibrating through the slot. The how you get diatonic bends is when you try to bend it. What's happening is you're bending the draw, and now and by changing the pressure in your mouth, you're actually starting to make the blow reed uh, bend backwards in the opposite direction it's designed to. That's how bends work on diatonics. Okay, that's all, that's all in one, one draw. All right, so that's basically it. And then uh, the other thing that I don't think I mentioned in my last video is uh, for all the people that are uh, good chromatic harmonicas, chromatic players and say well just that's going to change it too much and, and I won't be able to play the chromatic the way I normally do well that's 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 absolutely not true it has nothing to do with it whatsoever and there's one thing here's a lick that I learned oh uh, this is based on the style of Stevie Wonder he didn't play this exact lick he did this type of lick um, on the six six draw a lot but I do it on the seven blow So what I'm doing is with the seven, so the seven blow and the seven blow will slide in, they are valved. So I'm bending this and there are, this isn't a half valve bend. The two reeds are not re uh, reacting with each other. So I start with the seven blow slide in. I start with it bent down, release the bend, then release the slide, then push it, push it back in fast and let it out fast. And play uh, draw six, draw five. Okay, so you can still play the blow. You can still bend the lower note in in every hole. Is it, is it as if you were bending them on a regular chromatic harmonica? I mean, if you can do that, then you'll still be able to do it on this. But um, so th like this, so here's the seven hole blow bend, seven hole draw bend. Last two notes were draw six, draw five. So yeah, on a regular chromatic harmonica, getting this seven draw bend. That's it, it. It's not going to sound even if you someone can do that bend. It's not going to sound like that uh, because of it being isolated. It gets a little more uh, plasticky type of uh, a tone color to it. And as you f go further up the harmonica, it gets. Uh, more difficult, like doing an, an eight, eight blow bend. That's a nine draw. Eight blow, seven draw. So, nine draw. Eight blow. Seven draw. That little look I showed you. Um, a carry bell lick. Okay, then I ended it with uh, my, with my lick, the draw five, draw six. And draw five, draw six, uh, blow seven, draw seven, bent, then unbend it and bend it back down. And then that lick I showed you. Okay, so you can you can use this these types of bends. You, you can play the chromatic the same way that it's been played all along, but you can just add some more stuff to it that no one else has done. Okay, that, that's the cool part, I, I think. Um,
Okay. Well, I hope that clarifies it. And uh, if anyone else, anyone else has any more questions about uh, half valving and how it works and uh, the, the possibilities that it has, and if you think there's anything, any, any uh, negative aspects about doing it, you know, just uh, let me know and I'll try to cover it. All right. Thank you.